Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. This is a continuation of our deep dive series, where we are taking a look at every single character in the Nexus and showing off as many builds for them as we can. Today we've landed on Kael'thas, and to start things off, I am going to be focusing on his Flame Strike build. Does it deal damage? Absolutely. Does it deny area away from your enemies? Yes, but with the right talents, you can even do some surprising damage to them that some players don't see coming, as well as some phenomenal wave clear to boot. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Check out more of the deep dive in the playlist in the video description. And let's get into today's game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Braxis Holdout today. The friendly team, Kael'thas, Leoric, Rhaegar, Diablo, and Zul'jin. The enemy team, Johanna, Nova, Asmodan, Chromie, and Rhaegar. We're actually pretty well equipped for this map, all things considered. One thing that might be a little hard is actually stacking up our Mana Addict. But if we play aggressively for these region globes right here, maybe that won't be a problem. Our goal for today's video is to get the strongest flame strikes that one can possibly get. And because flame strike, once you empower it, will cast multiple times at level 16, we should be able to clear the lane out pretty fast as well. All right, let's get things underway. Looks like the enemy Johanna is hesitant to come out. Uh, Asmodan scouted us with his little army, dude, but that's okay. Really, our laning phase here is not going to be too complicated at all. Our goal is to efficiently clear the lane using as little mana as possible. And how we do that is by augmenting our W with our trait, and then putting that W on the mage, blowing that mage up with our Q. That's going to clear the lane very, very quickly and allow us to just move on with what else we want to do in our lives. We don't have to think about the lane at all. We're up to two regen globes already. And even though that this is a flame strike build, you may be wondering why we don't take convection oven at level one. And I have always, always, always viewed convection oven as a bit of a trap talent. It does give you a bit of extra damage, but it's not a ton. Uh, can I kill these guys on the rebound here? Oh, I got another flame strike on Asmodan. If you die, you lose all of the bonuses from your convection oven. And on top of that, the, the shield from having your mana addict stacked up simply allows you to be alive more and deal more damage in team fights that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. I'm moving in for the regen globe. We're gathering that. We're up to four right now. If I can, I'm making my way towards that one. It looks like I wasn't quite close enough. Big damage on Aspidan if I'm able to catch it. Oh, the auto attack did it. I actually thought I missed everything there. I was going to feel pretty bad. Um, we are going to start channeling this objective for the friendly team here. Looks like Leoric is still up in the top lane. Full health, too. Can he get that objective up there? We're going to Living Bomb. Clear the lane as fast as possible with that spinny lightning from Rhaegar, too. That's even faster, isn't it? That's even faster. Uh, Rhaegar pushed out kind of far here. Friendly team is in charge of the objective. Enemy Nova rotated up top. Is that their off lane? At level four, we're gonna go for Netherwind. I use this as a bit of a crutch, I'm not gonna lie. Netherwind allows me to actually land my E on enemies, as you just saw there. Once we do land the gravity laps, our goal is to simply put our Q under them and then apply a living bomb. That's kind of our basic combo that we're going for over and over and over again. If I use Verdant Spheres on my E ability, it makes it so it'll actually stun two targets instead of just the one. If I Verdon Spears my W, it removes the mana cost and cooldown, so I can cast it for free, just like that, and then go on with my line. And if I augment my Q ability, it's going to make it a significantly wider area of effect, so hopefully we can catch more people inside of that. And that is going to be the main focus of what we're doing today, really empowering that Q for full effectiveness. Speaking of which, let's just put it under Asmodan here and poke at him a little bit. That was 420 damage at level six. Plays it, boys. Another region globe in five seconds. I'm camping that out. I care more about these region globes than the objective right now because the early objective isn't really that big of a deal at all. Rhaegar moving up is going to get CC'd by not me. I missed everything. But now that he's down, I feel like I can bully this objective relatively well. Dodge some of the chromie sand that's likely coming our way. Why can I see that? Huh. 
because it's on objective? Does that show mines? Does that reveal? I didn't know that. Uh, Johanna is in position. Living bombs on her. Flame strike down towards the bottom. Diablo still in charge of the objective right now. There we go. We got it. So, living bomb. What's the cooldown on this region globe? We're at 13 right now. I stole that from my team. My bad team. My bad team. That was a little greedy. It was a little greedy kill thus right there. Level 7 is here, and now we're going to take Burned Flesh. Our Q is going to be empowered versus multiple heroes. And if we hit multiple heroes with it, they are going to take a percentage of their health damage as a direct result of that. Oh, Johanna just barely missing that flame strike damage there. We have a sizable push moving towards our enemies right now, and I'm just going to keep throwing these Qs back there to try to scare them away from this building even more. Real Nova running away at the bottom of the screen, managed to get a kill on our Tastingo. Why did I get tower damage? I didn't do anything to you, tower. Gravity Lapse is out. Is it enough to secure the kill on Rhaegar? Well, he got pushed away from me. So... Nope. <laughs> Johanna's moving in, but I kind of feel like I should really be backing up here. We do have a big advantage versus this enemy team, and that is that they kind of don't really have much dive. They're poking at us, and we're poking back at them. Flame strike, clear the wave, get my regen globe. Uh, gravity lapse. This motherfucker just missed. You for Rhaegar if he comes back. Perfect good kill on it has been okay i'm gonna break off and i'm gonna get my region club that brings us up to 18 real nova i don't know where she is dingo's taking a lot of damage here i need to be careful about moving in if they chase i could do something though no, they backed up. They're getting that mercenary camp there. So we should try to get this one over here. Once we finish Mana Addict, and really once we hit level 13, Kilthos becomes a surprisingly good jungler. Uh, at 13, we're going to pick up this talent that lowers our cooldowns for each passive tick of our living bomb. So what that means is we can augment our bomb twice to cast it on enemies and then get lesser cooldowns on something like our, cool our Q ability. And we can throw that out even more. I can't see this thing's health bar. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, my sip should be ready. I'm going to grab it and... Living bomb, living bomb Q. Just reaching globe. I got that one. Mana Addict is done. Well, technically. It always stacks. You should never stop thinking about Mana Addict. But at least we have the activatable part now. So we're going to get a shield for 100% of our maximum mana. That means at the press of a button, I have a 920 health shield that will help keep me safe. Like I said, this enemy team doesn't really have a lot of dive. So I can use that to protect myself from an Asmodan dunk or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and put a Phoenix right here in front of our Diablo. That will poke at these guys if they move back in on us. That lightning breath was pretty aggressive, but they didn't follow up, so he's totally fine. Totally chilling. Uh, I am in position, just kind of waiting for the objective. We still see two members of the enemy team at least up here, but Rhaegar and Asmodan have swapped down to the bottom. We don't know where their tank is, and Johanna does have that shield now that she can just straight up stun me with. Just like that. Oh man, a shield, shield, stun, Q, burner. And look at that. If we didn't have our mana addict shield, that literally would have been a death right there. And that's exactly why you take it. Friendly team is avenging me with Johanna too. You don't get to rough me up like that and just walk out of here. You love to see it. 20 seconds until I could do that again. So let's move down to the bottom lane. We can grab this region globe, grab this region globe, and maybe enhance our shield even more. Two are dead. Three are accounted for on the map. So never mind. I'll just take it. Ooh, it's mine. Little Kale Thoss getting the objective. Look at me. And again, all we have to do to clear lanes is WQ. Oh, I want that one. Give me that one, too. Oh, and look at that. WQ is already offline again. WQ. W. Get that region globe. And I'll be on my way. We're still in charge of the objective right now. It looks like the enemy team mostly went up to the top. Rhaegar moving in down here now. I'm going to run directly at him. Hoo -ah! 
was all my damage. That was everything. <laughs> that, that wasn't bad. <laughs> Asmodan was here with him, and he's like, fuck that. I just saw that damage. I'm going to leave. <laughs> So all that combo was, was grabbing it with my gravity laps, putting the, the Phoenix down, putting a Q down, and then letting it do its work. Beautiful. <gasps> Dingo started the boss. I love that play. Let's get in on that. If Phoenix was up, I could use it to just help out with that. Okay, now this is very important. We just unlocked a large portion of cooldown reduction, but it only works if you're using it right. So, uh, that's real, that's real, that's real, that's real. Uh, I got her. <laughs> uh, it only works if you use it right. So before we cast anything, we kind of want to use our W first. Uh, I don't need to empower anything there. I'll try to catch Johanna. And we basically just want to make sure we always have a living bomb ticking. Just like that, we put the living bomb on her, put the Phoenix in her path, and she can't leave. If we have a living bomb ticking, that's going to reduce the cooldown of our Q ability as well. Oh my God, are we winning this game too fast? <laughs> oh God. Chromie trying to survive in the corner, stopping time. She is not able to. Team, I need some other talent. I got to show off some other abilities. Let's leave. Let's leave this. Let's walk away. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Can they kill it? Uh, yes. Yes, they're gonna kill that. Awesome, good. What if we lose now? Yeah, I'll take the blame for that. I'll take the blame. That's on me. We're at 29 region globes right now. I'm gonna move down to the bottom lane and grab that one to bring us up to 30. That means our shield is approaching 1100 HP. And like I said, it just keeps stacking. It just keeps getting better. Johanna spotted in the middle of the map right now, fighting our Rhaegar. Nova following suit as well. Close. Close. All right. So the friendly team just hit level 16. At 16, we get Fury of the Sunwell. This is not only an amazing talent in team fights, it's also amazing at defending objectives like this one. Uh, let's go ahead and empower our E, drop this right underneath Johanna, and then watch as we get a free kill on Asmodan as well. The second cast of Flamestrike quite often just catches people completely unaware. You know how we were doing this little mini game where we needed to put a, a living bomb underneath the lane in order to kill it? We don't have to do that anymore at all. We could just simply empower a Q, put it on the minion wave, and profit. It's just gone. It just doesn't exist anymore. Our lane clear got better. Our team fight got better. Our objective clear got better. Our camp taking capabilities just got better. It is insane how much of a spike we get at level 16. Absolutely nuts. There are really good talents for spreading living bomb at level 16 too. That 16 power spike isn't just exclusive to the Q build. While all of these are pushing, I am going to lower my cooldowns and continue to try to deal some damage here. We could pick up one of these guys with gravity laps too, just to reduce damage intake. But man, between me and Rhaegar, that was just instantly taken. The only thing left on the map for us to do is grab this building down at the bottom. And we're extremely good at sieging that now too. Let's not forget that our Q ability deals quite a lot of damage. So we could just literally empower it, walk up and try to poke at the building if we felt so inclined. What I'm gonna do is put a Phoenix on it and try to catch these guys. I'm immediately going to shield that Nova damage. She could still get me if she wants to. Uh, let me back up. I'll get my sip. I'll try to control the objective. Uh, Leoric is on the core right now with some mercenary camps pushing in. So the enemy team is choosing blood over defending their own base right now. That's on them. This is a decision they made. I'll start by just getting this objective rolling for us. We are 25 seconds out on my next Phoenix, but I'll move in and try to help in this fight now. Chromie looks like she is trying once again to get out of there, but the team is just chasing her down too hard. Perfect time on that flame strike there too, secures that kill. And then we get a double blast here that will finish off that building. So this is the power of Kel'Thas with his flame strike build. 
At level 20, you can pick a talent that also increases the range of this. Exact same gameplay, but now you get to do it even safer from even further back, surrounded by your teammates that hopefully love you. Rhaegar picks up MVP with zero deaths this game. Very nicely done. Uh, why didn't I get on the... What? What is he doing there? Talents who went for in today's video are Mana Addict at level 1, Netherwind at 4, Burned Flesh into Phoenix, Pyromaniac into Fury of the Sunwell. Here are stats for this game. Leoric absolutely demolishing with that siege damage. I hope you guys enjoyed our first look at Camel Thoss in our deep dive. There is plenty more to come. If you want to see more of our deep dive series, make sure you check out our YouTube playlist. You can find it down in the video description of this very video.